All right, let's wrap this up now and talk about a few more topics, and we'll be all finished with diffraction, and you can get started on lab. So the first thing I want to talk about is something called a diffraction grating. When you talk about a grating, it means it's got a, a significant periodic layout of slits or phase shifting reflectors, okay? And so then it becomes a, a, a grating. So here's an example grating here. Here comes your plane wave in, and the gray, gray, grating here you can see just has all these little holes in it. So it's a bunch of parallel slits in series that are very periodic. And you'll see that the light will be diffracted at a very specific diffraction angle, theta d, and several other integer numbers of that angle. So let's look in closely to figure out what the diffraction angle that will, you know, that could exist. So zooming in here, here comes my plane waves, and then you've got these little open slits here, which are separated by a distance d. Okay, this d is the period of the grating, meaning the separation between each of these little apertures. Okay? Well, I know my light has to be in phase. And so if, for a given diffraction angle, let's say it's diffracting at theta d, if this is my angle for the light, I know that these photons have to all be in phase, right? That means that they, if there was a plane wave, they would all have to line up like this, right? Well, what you do then is you say you take this, whoops, sorry, didn't mean to do that. What you do is that you basically look here and say, what would it take? to achieve this, and so I'm starting to draw the plane waves on out here, and you look in here and say, well I must have between each of these a reset of delta x such that this one will be in phase with this one. So this delta x has to be in phase. And I can calculate this using a triangle here very easy. Delta x, this distance right here, is equal to d, my separation here, sine of my diffraction angle. That's easy, right? And so I could get that delta x, where everything's going to be nice and in phase. And again, this is for a transmissive diffraction grating here, so light's transmitting through it. And this is my equation for delta x, okay, where d is the period of the grating. So what must delta x be for this to be in phase? Well, that's easy. We know that for things to be in phase, you have to shift each time by 360 degrees. If you're 180 degrees, you're out of phase. And so that means 360 degrees is one wavelength of light, right? And so delta x must be some integer number of the wavelength of light you're using for the experiment. And so I'll, inter I'll put in there delta x equals m lambda, and I end up with my equation for a transmissive diffraction grating, where m lambda, integer number times the wavelength of light, is equal to d sine of the diffraction angle. Meaning that I can get multiple diffraction angles from this. And so you'll see there's not only for the zero, mo for zero mode, but for one, two, three, there will be multiple angles at which I can see intensity maximas for this diffraction angle. Okay? And you could solve for that, you know. Obviously, you can see that right here. Here is one delta x, and if I go on to the next line, that's two delta x's, three delta, four delta, five on, that would all line up with these other lines, and you can see how those integer numbers also give you allowable diffraction angles, and therefore those will work at other angles as well. This is an example of a diffraction grating here as well. You could do it like you have here where you have little holes in a metal foil, or you could do it like this. This could be reflective or transmissive. How could this be a transmissive phase grating? Well, this could be a material here, where as the light passes through, it has to go through this material here, but it gets slowed down because this has a higher refractive index than air. Here's air out here, and here's my material. And light that goes through here, right, will end up out of phase because when it travels through air, it goes faster. Higher refractive index slows things, slows things down. So this would be up here at this point where this is only reached here. And the same thing here. This photon through this region will go up to here. This photon will only make it to here. And you can see that these are all out of, out of phase. And as a result, I'll start to see the same thing in the far field where I'll have certain angles where this can be in phase. So this would be a transmissive phase grating. But it could also be reflective. If I had light coming down on here, the optical path length here versus here is very different. If I just bounce off here, that's a short optical path length. Whereas if I have to go all the way down here, I will have a phase delay due to the time it takes to go all the way down to the bottom of the trench and reflect back. So these type of gratings, if it's coated with the reflective metal, could also be a reflective grating because it gives you that same 
periodic phase shift that you would expect. Let's go back to Bragg diffraction, which was used for X-ray analysis of materials where we have layers of atoms. And if you look at the equation we had for looking at the crystallinity of a uh, material, you had it was m lambda 2d sine of theta. Now it's 2d, not just d sine of theta. Why is that? Well, on the previous page, we calculated diffraction for transmissive mode. But in reflective mode, if this is d, my, my, my spacing here, and now this is d here, I'm going to d here. I go in and out. And so my path length is doubled, hence you have 2d in this equation. And again, when you're doing this type of analysis, you look at the intensity that's diffracted versus all the angles, and you can use that to classify different materials looking at their diffraction peaks they have. Some other real-world world applications. In this lab, in about a week or two, we're going to start, or three weeks, we're going to start to use spectrometers, which basically can take a white light source and split it into all its colors. And how it does that is that white light source comes in, there's a mirror, focuses it onto a diffraction grating, and the diffraction grating then splits it up into all its colors onto this mirror, which then hits a detector array, which can measure the intensity of each color individually. And so this is, you know, using like the detectors we have in the lab, here's an example I had used in the past where I was working on a display device, and I had these different colored uh, fluorescent materials here, and I measured them using a spectrometer. Here's the intensity of the light versus wavelength, and you can see the intensity spectra for the green, for the red, for the blue. And here's the fluorescence uh, pump I used, which was a, a gallium nitride, indium gallium nitride uh, 400 nanometer LED here. Now, one thing this tells you about diffraction is that it's heavily wavelength dependent because the reflection angle here is spread out in terms of all the different colors. And that makes sense because when we talked about diffraction, it is dependent on phase, right? And phase is dependent and interference is dependent on wavelength. So diffractive elements, this is very important, diffractive elements are very, very dependent on wavelength. The angles will change as you change the wave wavelength of light and you can see that here how it takes white light and splits it up into all its colors. And you know in terms of other applications look at uh, trying to make a, uh, a modern computer chip. You know their diffraction become a, can become a huge issue because if you look at a photo mask when you're making a, uh, a, a, a silicon chip you basically shine light through the photo mask onto the substrate and then use that to optically pattern materials. But if you look at this, this is pretty much a diffraction grating. I block it and I've got transparent spaces here where the light can get through. And so one of the things they do is they say, well, diffraction is a problem because if I have a bunch of plane waves, it causes it to spread out. And that's not what I want when I want to pattern fine features on a substrate. So that what, they, what they've done also is they say, well, let's use that to our advantage. They actually etch down into the glass, induce different optical path lengths because light travels faster through air than it does through glass. And as a result, they'll use diffraction to help steer the light where they want it to go and use that in their favor. And so, for example, here, in this, in this uh, presentation that was from Intel, they said they could use 193 nanometer wavelength light to pattern only 35 milliliter lines using alternating phase shift masks, which are relying on diffraction. And you're asking, well, why don't you just put the mask right against the material you want to pattern? You could do that and not have to worry about diffraction because the light doesn't have space to spread out. So if I put the material right here and push this right against, it, right against it and set the light this way, the light wouldn't spread out. But the problem is, is when you make contact, you cause defects on the surface. And so you typically use non-contact proximity lithography, meaning that gives it a little bit of space for the light to spread out, hence why you want to sometimes look at diffraction in your favor and build it up such that it directs the light where you want it to go. And you will see at the end of the lab this week that you can use diffraction to make even flat lenses. So I'm talking about a thing that looks like a lens, but it's as flat as a piece of paper. Okay? And amazing optical effects. So you'll see some pretty cool diffraction cards we'll play with where you'll shine the laser light through them, and you'll see even full images appear on the other side. And those are all based off these, what they sometimes they call them holographic films like this, where when you look at the at the surface of this thing under a, under a very fine microscope, you can see this says 10 micron scale bar. These little ridges, basically as light comes through the plastic, 
induce a phase shift because if you have a, a higher ridge, light spends more time in the plastic and is slowed down. And when you do this, you end up with a beautiful diffraction pattern on the other side. When we talk about Fourier optics, you understand how the heck they make these things. When you experiment with these in, in lab, you're like, how in the world do they make these complex images come out of diffraction patterns? How they do it is Fourier transfer, and we'll talk about that when we do Fourier optics. Key point is that you get a phase delay mainly due to the different heights as light comes through this optical film. So at this point you're done, do the review, and we will uh, see you in lecture for the quiz and see you in the lab.